Roll, please. Mayor Stewie? Present. Mr. Here. Mr. Leo's absence. Here. 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 Notice of this meeting was provided to the Burnersville News, Courier News, and Star Ledger, filed with the municipal clerk and posted on the municipal bulletin board on May 25th, 2016. Um, item number three, closed session. We already um, um, took care of that um, before this meeting. So, um, we reopened our meeting, and now we'll move on to Pledge of Allegiance. Please all rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, open session. At this point in the meeting, the mayor and council welcome comments from any member of the public to help facilitate an orderly meeting and permit the opportunity for anyone who wishes to be heard, speakers shall limit their comments to five minutes. If reading from a prepared statement, please provide a copy and email a copy to the clerk's office after making your comments so it may be properly reflected in the minutes. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard? Yeah. Hi. Um, Come on up and oh state your name, name. State your name for the clerk. Sure. Um, my first name is Gabrielle, and my last name is Kubernet, and I live at 8 Maple Street in Kentucky. So, G-E-B-E-R-N-E. So, actually, Mayor Sui, you and I spoke, Yes. and you asked me to provide to the council an appeal to my refund request for my summer day camp. Yes. And I didn't get any responses, but I did. Thank you, Sheriff, for being very, very attentive. But um, my, my argument was that, and I even had the brochure here, that when I requested a refund for the camp, when I found out that the, the morning session of the camp, they don't provide any kind of accommodations for my eight-year-old to get from the one camp to the other, I, the camp wasn't a fit anymore. So I called immediately for a refund looked up the refund policy on page 20, called in and asked for the request, and it's hidden on the back, the new policy. I understand the policy hadn't changed. I think it should have been there. So all I'm asking for is a refund of my full money that I paid for camp for my son so that I can put him in something that's more accommodating for us this summer that can handle making sure that the kid is safe when I drop him off until when I get home from work. So. <laughs> or would you just like to say yes now? <laughs> would you like to say anything else? Council members, any questions? The problem that we have had, which is why we implemented the procedure, is that people sort of sign up for all this stuff yes. and then sign up for other stuff and say, oh, well, now I you know, don't want to do this anymore. Right. And it screws up our numbers. We've made commitments to other kids. Your son is one of the number of kids in the camp. And we don't want people sort of willy-nilly signing up and then saying, oh, this sounds better, I'll move over here and just get my money back. Because, you know, poor Cheryl and Cindy are, you know, responding. We have outside vendors that, you know, one minute they're teaching a full class, the next minute, whoops, we may not have enough. And it's, it has historically been a problem. Right. And I can understand that. And as I had said, I have no way of making sure my son has someone's hand to hold from the junior high gym to rejoin the camp. And that's what, you know, $2,000 is a lot of money to pay for camp with these supplemental basketball. You know, Mr. Thurlow is so popular. Benjamin, I'm so excited about that. And I hope to stay in that. But when I, I go to work, I have to make sure that my son is being taken care of and there was no one to take him from one camp to the other. I needed to get him in a camp that is from morning till night when I can pick him up. So I understand that small processing fee, even though there was a $45 convenience fee when I did it online, which is usually all the camps want you to sign up online. So $45 flat fee to sign up through online, I don't think a lot of that. But um, then to, to hold another, it was going to be $300, and like I said, she been amazing with trying to come up with other solutions that I want to do. Thank you. Again, I can't say enough. But I want to do the one portion of that to give it a try. But the other six weeks, it's really impossible for a working parent 
to get your kid in the middle of the day to walk him across a busy parking lot in a pool. I have to get him in something that's going to be from morning till night. Cheryl, obviously, we're not talking about a, a non total non refund. It was just the uh, what do we change to a 15 15 percent? So, what's the dollar amount that? Uh, Off the top of my head, I don't remember. But she wants to transfer. Uh, we transfer into the technology camp, so that's automatic. So that part has no refund effect. It's just the balance of the record. About thirteen hundred. Yeah, I think you're correct. Yes. And so it's fifteen percent of that, which we're talking about one hundred and eighty dollars. I think it comes to thirteen hundred after the fifteen percent because she paid for the rec camps. I have it downstairs. Yeah. It, was, it was going to be about two hundred dollars, which correct isn't going to break anybody. But when you're paying so much for camp, and then I have after this six weeks, I have another couple of weeks. Give us four thousand dollars for the average family for one kid in the summer. Two hundred makes a difference. <clears throat> we did ask um, because we did raise some very good points about uh, safe transportation from when part of the camp is facing to the other. And uh, like a phone will occur from Cheryl to get on that. Um, I don't recall saying something whether we're able to come. Did we get that? We mm -hmm. don't transport. That's no, I think the last council meeting we said maybe we some kind of arrangement for a safe passage. We talked to the chief was here. Um, Janet, you oh, I was here at that council meeting, yeah. No, you weren't. Just the uh, yeah. didn't get yeah. to you. That question to get to you. We talked to the chief about maybe guards. We talked about some other ways that we could provide safe passage because certainly. <clears throat> this nice lady isn't the only person who would have that issue, and there's concerns about getting around. Well, if you want to hire the personnel to do that, um, but you know, every everybody's camp is all different times. It's not like you know, right. two o'clock we switch classes at three yes. o'clock. Yeah, you know? that Some camps are two fifteen, three fifteen, whatever. That's that's it. If you want to want me to hire more people to do so, we could. Uh, we'll see if we can do that. I didn't say hire four people necessarily, but just like well, we have to hire some. Because it's got to be more than one. It would be an almost an all-day job to run all the children from all different places because there's quite a few who go from the pool. Parents mm -hmm. bring them up from the pool, you know, different places. Mm -hmm. See, I guess I thought when I signed up because I don't think you know it's a lot of material covering a book and a lot of possible scenarios. But I assumed that maybe after the group was done, they'd go to the cafeteria. And at that point, they rejoin the rest of the group. That's what I, I just assumed. There wasn't any kind of that's the way it was done or anything to the contrary. And I know it distinctly said, and we can have this conversation, but the term does not provide transportation. I really never thought of that as transportation, because even the JCC provides transportation. They pick you up, they pick the kids up to the house and bring them home. So I thought of that as transportation. I didn't think from the gym to the pool, but he's a kid, he's a little child. He can't really walk across that lot by himself. If that's indeed where they even are, maybe they are still in the school or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's I think that when it gets to be too disjointed, I got too concerned that I'm not local mm -hmm. at the, during the day when I work to take care of that, and I just wanted mm -hmm. something that you know that had the variety. That the basketball that I was hoping to integrate, but so how much is the refund that you're asking for? It was one I said, right? Something I did. What we were I was to So he, you're saying one aspect of the camp he's not going to be doing now, correct? So he'll still be going. <clears throat> or the whole thing is over with because you can't go from one to the other. So right. he's still going to go there. So how? where is he going to go after that? i got to go find some, I have to go look him into, I know that like Camp Riverbend takes a morning till night kind of thing. But, you know, that's... Well, how would you get him from there to... I drop him in the morning and then I go to work and I pick him up at night. Okay. So yeah. you're going to stop both camps and you're going to go to Riverbend, you're basically saying. I don't actually have that planned yet, but those were options. There were, some, there were a couple of different options. So, <clears throat> so, so I, I still didn't get my answer to my question. I'm sorry. How much is the amount you're looking for? I think Around it's $200. $200 or something. Not, not equally, but you can see, because that's a lot. No, no of course not. No, not, not, not the convenience fee is, is gone. That's Just fine. Different. Zero. The fee yeah. we're holding is about $197 out of her um, $197 is like 15% of what she paid. Okay. Right. So, 
Yeah. 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 Ye
Well, I think that's but it's a little schedule. We're that will be all be function scheduled. of scheduling. And so you intend to Not every game is going to be scheduled because gonna, it's going to be open to the public. Well, also. no, it's open to the public, but there's going to be certain times you're going to have a tournament or you're going to have something going on. There's going to be, you know. The, the, the intention isn't to have multiple things going on right. simultaneously. That's not the intention. However, lacrosse may want to use it before the fields are open, for instance. They always used to use that area in the past. I. Don't so, so then it's not going to be really a it's not well, owned by the basketball. It's not asked owned right. by the basketball. No. Okay. It's a, uh, it's again, my concern is if you right. don't lay, if you don't have it defined, that what's going to happen is on a, you know, a Wednesday night in the summer, and you have two basketball games, a group says, all right, we're going to play volleyball, or we're going to get the soccer ball, or we're going to play lacrosse in the middle, and that's our right, and it's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. And well, kids are going to get hurt. It's intended to be scheduled by the recreation department. So even at nights? Yeah, the orga organized events are, are organized intended to be scheduled, but non organized events, That's anybody can go to your and play. Like you dropped your kid off tonight and they're going to come play. Right, you know? they're going to play. If yeah. kids come tonight, let's mm -hmm. say, and I hope, uh, I was, if you know, kids were playing there for Friday night, even though they weren't supposed to, but uh, that means it's going to get use, which would be great. But if you have, uh, and, and this develops into a park like where kids show up and play five on five on two courts and then play for winners, etc. And then kids say, well, I'm going to do something in the middle. Nothing scheduled. But someone says, I'm going to kick the soccer ball in the middle or I'm going to do some other event in the middle. But you're going to have a mess on your hands. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you, if, if a ball comes rolling and kids are running backwards playing basketball, and there's a volleyball or a soccer ball. What's another basketball? Hmm? What's another basketball for that court? That's a long way. They're to far go. enough and apart. The whole idea. That's a long way to go. Well, and a basketball is different than a soccer ball. A soccer ball is kicked and moves fast. I'm not. I'm not trying to deprive anyone from the game. I love volleyball. Like, I'm sorry. It sounds well, like it, that's not true. It sounds that way. It sounds like. It's that I'm trying to describe some of the game? No, I'm trying to keep kids yeah. from getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we all don't want people to get hurt. Uh, I, it just doesn't quite come across that way. I'm sorry, sorry. Okay. And, and then, well, I will tell you then, uh, I'm not being dis disingenuous. I mean, I am telling you the truth. Right. Right. I don't want kids getting hurt. And that's what we're concerned about. I think we'll have to go to the recreation committee and just establish rules too, because one of the things also, if they're playing at night, what are, we have neighbors. They can't be just playing all night long and everything else and whatever they want. They're, you know, what if they go out there at like six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and hooting and holler and everything else also? There's going to have to be rules. I have no problem with rules. I just think you should be concerned about. I understand well, no, concern. I, I, it's a, it is a valid point, but a permanent I mean, bench is not something I think not in the, the middle, middle is something that we can. That would be a far worse safety condition. Because who's going to move it? Do you know when you when you do have to use it for something? Else? Plus, it would ruin the surface. You can't just put a bench down. It's not made for it. We're going to be putting benches on the ends. I think. Well, we, well, we funded the whole thing. We did have a lot of talks about having <clears> you know, whether you're lining for other things or other activities. So because other activities need um, practice areas as well, and um, we want to make sure the surface. So do you, is going do to you see this as always scheduled? That the kids cannot just show up on some variations and have to come up with a. You know, no, I don't. Always. I think it's going to be always scheduled. Yeah. I think the recreation department, when they have camps, they're going to want to use it, correct, Joe? Of course. For something? Okay, so that's going to have to be scheduled. If somebody comes in pickup game and there's an activity going on, they have to leave. Exactly. Exactly. So there, right. so, there I'm you go. I'm not concerned about the scheduling. I'm concerned what happens, which is going to be out of the rec's control. Well, that's I mean, today it's open and people can do whatever they want anyway. It's been like that for a long time. Well, there was always a sign there, no this, 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 no skateboarding, no mm -hmm. ice right. hockey, I don't know how they played ice hockey, but, they're, uh, but it was open. They filled it, it up in the winter time. <laughs> they tried to do it. No, right. but it was open. Well, all the coaches, you know, we're not trying, yes, do I love basketball? Yes, I love baseball, lacrosse, my sons play, all of them. Um, but I, I, I am concerned that if, when kids come to play pickup, that it becomes something. And, and what, what, if, and what if, if kids are playing soccer, or if kids are playing lacrosse, and kids are coming to play basketball, what happens? They just have to... <clears throat> well, I mean, presumably most of the year, except in sort of April, 
March, early April, if kids want to go kick a soccer ball, they can go to polo fields, they can go if there's no games, you know, for pickup stuff, all cut mm -hmm. turf. And there are other places that are better for soccer lacrosse than the basketball courts <coughs> and surface. I'll tell you, I actually attended a uh, <coughs> town who did that sponsored a uh, sports psychologist who's very well respected and but very well known, I don't remember his name. And he talked about good sports and organized sports. He said, you know, in the old days, kids just played and they sort of things out themselves. Everything was fine until parents got involved. Uh, um, I do not like it. That's why, that's one of the reasons why we love these courts, because we want the kids just to go and play pickup. I think that's what kids lack. Everything's structured. My kids play AAU, they have a coach yelling at them, sitting with them when they don't, you know, sitting them down when they make a mistake. That's not what, that's not how you learn. You learn by trial and error. I just don't want them to learn by trial and error and hitting their head. Like big and there's mm -hmm. other stuff going on. Indeed. All right, the point. Well, we'll have Thank, you. Thank you. We will watch it. Anyone else in the public? Yes. Mayor Sui, I'm going to give public comment on two issues that are on the agenda. Sure. Um, they're further down, <laughs> the Claremont steps and the new management plan. Okay. So just brief comments. Is it too early or should I? No, you can, okay. you can comment. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Christy McDonald. I live at 59 Anderson Hill Road. Um, I'm, the first thing I'm going to comment on and provide, I just want to go give my support for the deal management plan. Um, we've heard a lot of um, people come and talk about the need for deer management, um, the fact that our forests are being eaten by the overabundance of deer, and um, we have a lot of exotic um, plant species from Europe and Asia that are taking over. Um, we have very little regeneration of forests, so when the older trees die, we're not going to have trees coming up, so we know the reason for it. Um, Ed English and the Green Team did an excellent job with their consultants working on the deer management plan. Um, so I just am here to give my support for that. And um, any questions? <laughs> the second thing that I wanted to um, give support for are the Paramount Steps. Um, I, I live on Anderson Hill Road, but I did live on Somerset Ave, and I also feel that the steps are, are sort of an interesting landmark in the town. They're, um, you know, when they're restored, hopefully, they're going to be a very attractive feature. And they also provide a lot of convenience to the people living up on the hill there. Um, but even for people not living there, I think they're a part of the town that is an attractive historic feature. And I hope that they're going to decide to preserve them. We did bless them, didn't we? No, we, we have it on so we have a draft, a draft on the agenda this evening, yes. How to money allocate the money today. And that's it. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? No one else? All right, I'll close the um, open session on um, presentations. Um, Mr. Jessup, would you like to speak or you want to wait till later? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, as you may recall, back on March 28th of this year, you got a resolution declaring certain blocks and lots in town as an area in need of redevelopment. Those areas consisted principally of a block on uh, a parcel property on Quimby Street and a uh, what's commonly known as the train station in Park um, From that time, your planner, all those, uh, couldn't be here tonight. prepared a redevelopment plan uh, for that redevelopment area. The redevelopment plan essentially becomes the zoning for the area uh, once it's adopted, supersedes your existing uh, zoning. That plan is before you tonight. That plan uh, encourages uh, downtown living for empty nesters and uh, millennials. It encourages preservation of the historic nature of the downtown and the area. Uh, it protects the train station through an keeping an expanded space open to uh, keep the train station and the, uh, the concrete wall there uh, protected and, uh, uh, and remaining in place. And it encourages uh, parking for residents uh, 
uh, for businesses in downtown and for uh, commuters. So the redevelopment plan does a couple things. One, it governs the use in the area, and the use in this case in the redevelopment area is limited to residential and parking. Those are the only two uses that would be permitted in the redevelopment area. Uh, it does require historic preservation for both the train station and the wall. Uh, it it uh, requires certain minimum parking requirements per each bedroom count. Um, I mean, there's a slight deviation from the one you received in your packets to the one that, uh, that we're asking you to consider now, so I just want to go over that briefly. Uh, each one bedroom unit would require not less than 1.25 spaces per unit. Each two bedroom unit would require not less than 1.75 spaces per unit. And each three bedroom unit, if any, would require not less than two spaces uh, per unit. In addition, according to the plan, any developer would have to satisfy whatever requirements NJ Transit has for uh, uh, parking, because some of that land is currently owned by NJ Transit, as well as replacement of the current retail uh, parking. So uh, it's critical to the plan that retail parking be protected and be provided for, that commuter parking be protected and provided for, and the ratios I gave you that residential parking is also uh, provided for. Uh, from a height perspective, the current plan as before you uh, says that the buildings cannot be more than four stories or 40 feet. Uh, there are also standards in the plan for vertical and horizontal um, massing, uh, different type of design features, architectural design features. Some of them are called out based on existing buildings in the downtown, in the area, um, the inn, for example. Uh, Off-street parking inside the redevelopment area is required to be shielded by residential. So if you picture a residential building on, um, on Minebrook, uh, there's parking maybe behind it, but you won't see any, any of the residential parking from Minebrook. The plan requires that that be shielded by, by residential by, by the building. Uh, the plan also uh, contemplates only one ingress and egress. It's basically an acceptance sort of courtyard area right in front of the train station, again, keeping that expanse nice and open. Uh, and the plan also goes through the types of items in the plan that can be deviated from through variances by the planning board versus which types of changes, uh, for example, use and height, which can't change without coming back with a plan amendment, which of course you all are a major uh, controller of. Uh, on the uh, plan itself, from this point, you have a resolution that would refer this plan, uh, as you have it, as I described it, to the planning board. Under the redevelopment law, the planning board is required to hold a public hearing and to provide any of their recommendations and findings to you. We are hopeful that the planning board will consider that at their meeting. I believe it's next Thursday. Uh, and then from there, the planning board transmits any findings and recommendations back to you, the council, for your consideration. You can accept their changes, you can reject their changes, uh, and then you would move forward uh, with whatever the plan is at that point after planning board hearing, public comment, consideration, etc. Uh, you would introduce that, the redevelopment plan, by ordinance, and then uh, move for a public hearing and final adoption on the plan uh, via the same ordinance. So there's a public hearing component of this at the planning board level, again, <coughs> uh, presumably next week. That. And then there is also a public hearing component of this before this governing body uh, when you go to finally adopt the ordinance. Once that ordinance is finally adopted, you have a redevelopment. We already have a redevelopment area. We have a redevelopment plan, which means we have a, an ability to um, consider uh, one or more developers. And the critical part here is the earlier we designate conditionally, typically, a developer, the earlier the firm can establish a developer funded escrow to A, pick up development costs on a going forward basis, and we would also negotiate and pick up some or all of the borough costs that you incur to get to this point in the first place. Understand why you can't do that if you have a redevelopment project, you have a project, you have a plan. This is you know, the next step getting to the <coughs> plan so that we can get to the point where we can start um, talking with developers and again, designating one, and then uh, uh, reimbursing the town for its costs and picking up all the costs on a going forward basis. So we know it's a lengthy process, we know it's an expensive process, but it's one that ultimately we plan on uh, putting back on, on whoever has the compromise. Now, what 
flexibility do we have in terms of um, approving a plan that a developer proposes or is is that as long as it's within the ordinance we're kind of at their discretion so as long as the plan the site plan that the developer puts together and uh, sends to the planning board as long as it does not violate any of the provisions of the redevelopment plan, the one before you, uh, then the planning board will end up granting that application for site plan because the project will match the requirements in your redevelopment plan. It's only if the developer comes to you and says, I know it says nothing with residential, but I really want it to be an amusement park. Well, that's not a, that's not a permitted uh, use under the plan, and that's not a deviation that the planning board can say, Notwithstanding what the council put together with respect to the plan, we're going to grant a variance and let them build an amusement park. They are limited to what's inside the, uh, what the, the limits that are inside the redevelopment plan. Uh, but if they meet all the criteria within the redevelopment plan, uh, then they, you basically have them as a right to go ahead and build that project. We will also have, as part of this process with the developer, a redevelopment agreement that will govern many items, including construction, timetables, permits, etc. Uh, one of the things we have done in the past in certain circumstances is build the actual site plan into the redevelopment agreement, which provides another layer of control because you, uh, the borough, the borough council, are the ones that execute that redevelopment plan. So once it comes back from the planning board, we have some say in the process and control. Well, there's no way of where we're going. Yes. You know, your first level of control is this redevelopment, yes. which is something. Mm -hmm. right? so, so you are, you know, if you choose to move forward tonight and adopt a resolution that refers this plan to the planning board, you are essentially saying we are okay with the use that is in the plan, we are okay with the height that is in the plan, we are okay with the parking that is in the plan, we are okay mm -hmm. with the architectural, you know, the, the historic nature, historic preservation, etc. Um, you know, the parking for, for businesses in downtown uh, Congress, all of those things you're saying if they put, put up to a site plan that matches that, then that project will be able to go forward. I have two questions. The first is, with I was trying to visualize, so we have, you're talking about four stories, 48 feet. Um, we have all of our existing parking needs, and then we have the parking guys reduce slightly the uh, one bedroom allotment, two bedroom allotment. So are you envisioning 100 units in two floors and two floors of parking? How do you foresee, I, I, there's no architectural rendering and that has to all be done, I understand that. Right, but right. It's, it's a developer's I, challenge. Right. right, but I was trying to just visualize <laughs> potentially 100 units in those two buildings with parking, which might be doubled. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say, I'm not imaginative enough. <laughs> so, so thankfully, that's you know the job of, of that's the challenge of the developer uh, to do. But I think what you would likely see is some sort of platform parking, maybe two levels of parking with uh, you know if one of them is you know set below, for example, then you you have room for two or three stories of uh, of residential. You have you know it's across two buildings presumably, right? One on each side of the train station. Right. The redevelopment area also includes that gravel lot that is behind um, the, the train tracks there. And one of the things that we've talked about with the planner is requiring a developer to sort of make a connection from that back lot out towards the downtown as a more sort of inviting and useful uh, spot to satisfy parking. Um, there's also you know the lot uh, over on Green Lane. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Which is. Pretty tiny. Right, I mean, right. that would leave the post. There was no mention of the post office, so you would leave the post office there and just make well, remember maybe a multi-level parking for the post office. Remember that as of now, the post office lot itself is not a lot that was included in the study as an area of development. Right? We studied the parcel next door, but we did not, we did not actually study the post office parcel itself. So we could, at this point, just put throw that in the mix and say okay. to the developer. What can you do now if you have both of these? I had the wrong one, thought in my mind. Okay. One of the things we can do is certainly go back and study that parcel and see whether it qualifies and put it into the redevelopment into the area. And 
that may open up some options. And it may be that the developer says, look, I'm close, but I really need an extra 25 spaces or something. And then maybe that's when we look for that one and figure out what there's alternatives. Um, we also don't yet know what New Jersey Transit's going to require. Right. Right? Parking, that's a big variable. Um, what we do know is from other experiences is transit is anxious to unload their property. They, they don't want you know, to be in the parking business. Um, whether they're going to require one for one, whether they're going to require one and a half for one, or whether they're going to require half for one, or anything in between, we don't know yet. And that will be a significant um, factor in trying to figure out exactly how all the parking can be satisfied and still build a number of units, whether it's 70 or 80 or 100, or certainly not more than 100, according to the plan, but whatever that number is, in a way that financially makes sense when you can get it done and make it a successful project. Yeah. Right. My next question is, you know, the uh, 600-pound gorilla in all of our backgrounds is COA. Yes. And there was no mention in your proposal, you know, do we have control over how many you... Yes. <laughs> Not to put you off, Council. No, but wait. But, but you yeah, know where so, I'm going. So, so, we, so the plan which is, you know, again, your, your plan of it together. The plan does not have a specific uh, COA component to it. Um, that is intentional. That is, when, when we start the projects, we sort of prefer it that way. Um, COA is, as you were sort of suggesting, it is an ever-evolving... Right. We don't know, That's exactly but we know it's there. <laughs> which, is, which is why I, I personally don't like putting a requirement in a plan before you even have a, an idea of a project yet alone a developer and a regular and a unit count and the economics to know this project can handle 20% if that's what it said in the plan. So or, that becomes the planning board's <clears throat> duty? It, it also, we more put it on the council, we would negotiate in that redevelopment agreement I mentioned earlier. So once we have a redeveloper, we're going to enter into what ends up being a 90 plus page contract redevelopment agreement that designates that, gives them the power to develop. It's a whole bunch of contingencies requirements on what they have to do in order to carry out the redevelopment project. One of those will be cut off. And so that agreement, which will be negotiated at a time when we all have a much better sense of exactly what we're looking at building, we'll be able to know, well, our goal is 20%. But we start doing all the math, we look at the revenues, we say we've got 85 units, here's the way the math looks, it can really only afford 18%. Are we okay with that or not? And we make that decision when we enter into that redevelopment agreement at a time when we have enough information to really be able to make that decision. <clears throat> right now, but frankly, to sit there and say, 20%, most under any circumstance, the, the, the project may be down the line, right? I mean, economically, maybe 30%, 50%, whatever, town by town, it's all different, because we're cool. town by town, the requirements are different, and people are handling it in different and ways. At this point, no town knows. That's exactly right. Uh, it's a significant issue, it's one that, it's one that absolutely will be addressed, and it would be addressed, the time to address it is in the redevelopment agreement when they're negotiating with the developer. We have a sense of what exactly what they are trying to build, and we can say, we think your project can afford X, and we would like that to be uh, you know, the requirement and, and negotiate Right, but we said before that once we've adopted the ordinance and reestablished the zoning, um, the developer basically can as long as he meets the zoning terms, can construct whatever project fits. At what point are we negotiating COA or any of those restrictions? Uh, so he can build what he wants, but whether or not it has an affordable, a senior restricted, or some other requirement are not things that are part of the site plan, but things that are being negotiated according to the redevelopment agreement. So the process from here, let's say the planning board holds their public hearing on the plan, they send it back to you, you introduce it by ordinance, you finally adopt it by ordinance. Let's say we have developer Bob out there ready to go. We, uh, we can, the night that you adopt your ordinance approving this redevelopment plan, you can adopt a resolution um, that conditionally designates redeveloper Bob as the redeveloper for that project. That, that does two things. One, it again permits us to establish an escrow and make redeveloper Bob start paying all of your costs. And two, it will say that his right to build is subject to negotiation and execution of a redevelopment agreement, the full-blown 100-page agreement, within 120 days. 
150 days, whatever that date's going to be. Within that time period, we're going to sit down and have several meetings with Bob and walk through his project, his blueprints, his revenue distribution, the way he tries to park the project, um, all his architectures, all of the different things that make up that project. And we're going to say, this is your parking requirement, this is what we want your affordable housing requirement to be, this is how we want you to improve the walkway area from the background a lot towards the downtown area. Uh, these are the, some additional, you know, we want you to employ uh, you know, local, um, uh, 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 local uh, contractors or subcontractors that want all these different types of requirements that can go into the development agreement would be negotiated during that time period. All right, so we still we still have that opportunity to Absolutely. address all of those issues. Absolutely. Yes, and the time to do that is basically after you've got a plan in place and you're negotiating a project with the developer. Because at that point, you'll have a really good sense of what the developer is trying to do there. And one clarification, Janet, you mentioned four stories at 48 feet, and I thought you said 40 feet before. What's no, the... it's four stories or 48. Got it. Okay. Feet. And what that does is that allows for 10 foot ceilings in the uh, residential units. 10 foot ceilings essentially require about 11 and a half feet of total deck space. 11 and a half to 12 feet of total deck space. Four stories, you get 48 feet. If you were to be able to have you know, higher ceilings in, in what ends up being a, a nicer sort of Else? Roughly be the height of the station. Yes, roughly. Exactly. That's basically, yeah, what it is. basically the height of the station. And probably similar in design somehow. Right, you can see yeah. the pictures right here. Yeah. You can see down below one, two, three, and then the dormers at the top. It's mm -hmm. more. But you're not going to be looking at a new parking deck or other no. things that are just, you know. Or the catenaries yeah. that you see up there with the New Jersey Transit, all the growth. Exactly. Right, right. Again, the plan requires that from all the parking, all the uh, off, -site, off street parking. <laughs> it's amazing how it can be done these days, too. That's it? That's it. All right, Matt, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, move on items of business. Um, ordinances. I'd like to take the motion to move that Ordinance 16-1720 requiring all residential dwelling units to have smoke detectors and amending Chapter 15 of the Borough Code and Title Fire Prevention. Be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law, and that a public hearing be scheduled for a meeting beginning at 7 p.m. June 27, 2016. I'll move. Move by Councilman Smith. Second. Second by Councilman Youngblood. All in favor? There's been some jack edges in the it, it, changes. This was at the request of the fire official, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't add any inspections. It just allows a, a smoke detector inspection to be part of the rental housing inspections. Oh, okay. It's the end result of all. Okay. It's, so I thought it was required for all of us. Well, currently it is it's only required at, at the ordinance level uh, for those that are uh, by not more than two households. Oh. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, it was moved by Mr. Schmidt, second by Mr. Youngblood. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The ayes have it. All right, resolutions. We have 16111 through 16118. Anybody want to pull any for discussion? Uh, can we pull 16113? I just have a quick question on that. Sure. sure. In one one four, please. All right, good. Yeah, the first. 113. The, the Municipal Alliance, because I was trying to match the numbers in the package with the bills that you're paying. Are we paying, um, does, do all four, I should know this, I know. Do all four municipalities pay the same? So we're all paying, four, was it 4,000 plus 2,000 plus one? I'm trying to remember. Ralph? I don't believe they're all the same. Okay. Yeah, population and district. All right, Peter. Oh, um, the non-resident 
these, I mean, they, there's no, I don't know, just, is that all, are all the fees been looked at at present and non residential? Have they been thoughts taken? Sorry? Have all the fees been uh, revised lately based on what's going on? Do you can do a survey or? No, we always have the, the non resident fee you're talking about. Well, that resident and non resident. Just some fees, if we run a different camp, that, if we run a different camp and the fee changes, that, that's what that is. That's, that's all it is. We could add a new camp or do an older camp. And it could be a different contractor doing the camp for us, and they're going to be maybe to us maybe less or more than the last one. And that's all it is. It's just adding, usually most of it's adding the camp. Okay. Thank you. Kevin, on, on, um, on 112. Yes. Um, why is a uh, zoning permit required? If we're putting a shed on our own property, there, it's a donation, and they're erecting it. So it's not us. Basically. Anytime we do anything, yeah, so we're just waving. waving. It's a donation, and someone else is doing it. Yeah. Right, but my point is, why do you need a why do you need a permit if it's on our property? If we're giving them permission to do it, I mean, well, I grant we comply to the laws. Yeah. Everybody else. Yes. Does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's baseball. It's a little bit. I understand. Well, but still. And it's but, a great donation. But if you have, um, if you were, I guess, I don't know if Jack can help us out, but I think if you're, if you're leasing out property or letting other people use it and there's things being improved, I don't know. It's the right thing to do. So. But we need, they, but we're we still, we, yeah. we don't have to by law follow all the zoning requirements, but in the mixture of the code, it has to put it in there that we generally follow, except for use there. Right, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good business practice to go ahead and have the uh, permit filed. Correct. And have it approved by the uh, zoning board. Correct. Okay. All right, anyone else? I will entertain a motion to move. I'll move. Move by Mr. Youngblood. I'll second it. Second by Mr. DePortier. Roll call, please. Mr. Bernbaum? Yes. Mr. DePortier? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Youngblood? Yes. All right, 6C, Library HBAC Contract Award. I'm um, Jack, there was um, I suppose some additional correspondence with that. Yes. Uh, Dr. Walker is here this evening. Uh, he can explain the open the bids. And the second low bidder has challenged the low bidder on the ground that he did not list his electrical subcontract correctly in the bid documents. Uh, state law requires that the four big subs all be listed in the bid. Uh, and it's a fatal defect if you don't do so. However, the low bidder says he's going to employ a, uh, an electrician to work on this project. Can I ask what the delta is between the two low bids? Yes. It's, in the package. it's like 20 grand. Yeah, it's a $19,000. Now, legally, we're required to accept, uh, assuming that the uh, the low bidder had included the name of the electrician, we would be legally obligated to accept that yeah. that bid. That's correct. Unless they weren't qualified for service. Right. right. Have they since notified us as to who the elect their electrical contractor is? They can't add a subcontractor after the bid is open. What they've zone. said is they're going to have one in their employee as opposed to a subcontractor. So he's going to be paid directly. Correct. And the, uh, employee with benefits and Okay, so essentially not a sub, it's gonna be an employee of the of the contractor that's, that's been awarded correct. the bid. And, okay. and does that pass muster with the state? Well there's no case law on it. Uh, as I said the case the statute is clear that if you don't list a sub I don't want to say something that's against the law. Yeah we can be first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if you wish we could discuss the closed session briefly uh, as to the legal aspects. I think we probably should. Otherwise, we have to reject them all. 
I think we should hear from uh, yeah, the parties here tonight and I then uh, discuss in uh, closed session uh, and get your opinion. Gentlemen. Something to say about this. <clears throat> My name is Robert Smith. I represent professional crime control. This is the head and he's the owner. Uh, the project manager. Our contention is that just as when you do a project, you would hire anybody as needed for that project, an HVAC technician as needed for the project. We are hiring an electrician for this project under our employee, under our insurance, and he, I have an application right here from the electrician and our employee to actually he's working part time for us. Which is, I don't see any conflict for that as long as when we apply for the permits, he's a licensed electrician under our employee. It does not break any subcontractor agreement because he is not a subcontractor. He is an employee of our company. We are more qualified to do the job. We have licensed HVAC techs on the job. And uh, we are a little better, and I don't see a conflict with this. If need be, we can give you, we can give you several applicants that apply for this job. This is our, right now, our primary one that we like, and we're hiring for the job. We already gave him a go-ahead, and we haven't even received the contract on the job yet, but we will employ him for the job, and he will be under our insurance and under our employee. Questions, anyone? Presumably, if something happens and he can't work, or... Yeah. We will have another one. As long as that... Yeah, we'll have somebody else to employed. As long as a licensed electrician signs the permit, mm -hmm. and against the conflict of a subcontractor. He's not a subcontractor, right. he's an employee. Right. Right. He Nothing that says you can't do that. Mm -hmm. We retain Jack, are there any issues that we need information on to be able to continue the discussion and closed? No, is the second elevator? You know, this evening, they did send a letter, but they haven't come. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we can discuss briefly and closed. Thank you for coming. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Discuss this further in executive session. Um, 60 year management program. Okay. Um, included in your package were some pictures. Ed and some of the gentlemen from Blue Ridge actually went through a couple of the properties. Um, there is one tree stand that is still up. Excuse me. I have a question. Why don't we, get the, since it's our property, and someone else has got a tree stand on it. Why don't we get the cops out there? Well, it's, uh, that's, you it, know. it will be disappearing shortly. So if, if someone wants to reclaim the property, they better go get it. We also, when we were going through, uh, we Chunk found shotgun shells, shells which, you know, is clearly not within the uh, ordinance. And miniature campsites. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, up off of Charlotte Hill is a total dump. Okay. Um, so I maybe having a little to, more activity in there is not a bad Sandy thing. Sandy sent you something last week about doing an ordinance just now. Well, I, I, I did a resolution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, now, I, I did not have everything. I would just add to the resolution that to incorporate the terms of the deer management program, I think, which I did not have. Normally, you know, any project we've done and we've seen somebody <coughs> see something that shouldn't be there, we usually take it, and then when someone comes to claim it, we tell them that you're not supposed to be in there. Well, some of this stuff is quite far in, mm -hmm. you know, particularly off Charlotte Hill. We can take a truck down at some point and carry it out, um, and that will be done. But when we were walking there the other day, um, we did not. That's not good. It's not good. It's not weird. I'm sure the neighbors on Charlotte Hill aren't particularly happy. Wouldn't be happy to know that there are shotgun shells in this deer blind, but there are. So, um, you know, the next thing is really moving on to for the ordinance. Well, it'd be a resolution authorizing because we did the ordinance allowing yeah. hunting as part of the deer management program on barrel property. Uh, and at page 102 of the packet, it is a draft resolution uh, allowing Warren uh, in Blue Ridge, sorry, wrong color, uh, sports <laughs> club, 
to uh, to conduct it. And, and as I say, if you want to proceed on it, I didn't have all the backup materials when I did it, so I would just add a new paragraph two, which would say that the Sportsman Club shall comply with the terms and conditions of the Burnsville Theater Management Program 2016, uh, the terms of which are incorporated here by reference. Can we put those pictures in the file too? Absolutely. Because I just don't want somebody to be blamed for making a mess in there and it wasn't them. It's almost like, you know, a preoccupation inspection, I, yeah. I guess. We have them in black and white color. There you go. It's right. nice. I saw them. Anyone else? And Ed has about another 50 pictures. Well, you no, imagine? you should put all those right. in there I'm, because, you know, later on someone's going to say, oh, your, your hunters, all of a sudden they made a big mess. And, uh, no, they didn't, really. Okay. I mean, I will They were good stewards, the well, hopefully. Just was trying to get him to no, I, send a couple. Of it's the right thing to do. Succinct ones. And and we have in here <clears throat> that we can revoke this authorization at our discretion at any mm -hmm. time for no cause. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, All right. There's one aspect of the plan which I don't know if it was up. It, does, it may not have been updated, but um, the green team and um, everybody else has been working on this. Um, um, has been using the same, uh, has been using the person that has introduced this in many other areas, and that is, um, uh, is usually requires a, a doe before bucks. And we might just want to have that edited. But we can perhaps do that at, at a different. And that would go on the plan itself. So. Perhaps I can talk to the. Uh, I think we can, we can even change that, that little paragraph. Is that the general term, you know? Say as amended by the council. Yeah, I mean, it's now I think it's probably considered the quality program, but so I'm not sure if there's a official document that we can do that after this. Okay. Um, Anthony, we're going to number this now? 16119. Okay. Um, I just hand motion to move resolution 16119 authoring deer management hunt on borough owned land as amended by the council this evening. I'll move. No way, Mr. Deportier. Second. Second by Councilman Waite. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay, um, use of polo grounds from the rocket launch program. Something that's done every year with the yep. program. No problem. Anybody have any objections? No. All in favor? All right. Problems well for people. Sure, we're good. Next. No problems. All right, 6F, Claremont Steps. Um, I think we're at a point where we're all in favor and we have a resolution in our pack this evening. I'm not 100% mm. sure I'm in favor. Okay. Yeah. Partly because might get the vote tonight. I know that the Public okay. Works okay. Committee came out two week, three weeks ago, I guess it actually was, saying that they were in favor of it. I guess, you know, is the only reason that we are in favor of it is because we're going to take the money out of open space? No, we actually no, we're have gonna a petition here it's that was handed to me tonight from Anthony. From, There's a couple of things neighbors. going on. Uh, one of the things is the top wall we spoke about at the last meeting that being redone and then John took a look closer look and the, how it's built into the stairs so if you do one it really only makes sense to do the other am I paraphrasing that correctly I mean it extends out so and then closing it up the it, yeah I think our original thought was Re removing the stairs may save a lot of money and and be something that uh, we could you know we could really look at but the more we investigate the project, um, the less savings are there based on what we would have to do to seal off uh, the upper portion of the stairs. It's only, you know, as we pull, the stairs are in two sections. One comes down off the actual, we'll call it a parapet, but off the wall. And then there's actually a gap that comes down. So while the, the main section of stairs may be able to be removed fairly easily, to rebuild to build a wall the around the whole top um, and make it look consistent is is we're getting closer and closer to the cost of simply repairing the steps. So 
Um, I mean, that was my intent when we looked at it. Um, it's just we're, we're, we're not coming up with a good way um, of, of taking them out without putting our costs up there, uh, still being fairly substantial. It also came up, I mean, a lot of money, a lot of, a portion of the money has been, been budgeted, and it is actually <coughs> part. It's was raised in yes. one of our meetings. It's research, and, and in fact it is. And, and, you know, the funds that we have, the uh, portion of the open space, while in favor of using the entire plan, it is to do major capital improvements or preservation uh, of, of our facilities. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even if it's not something that people are jumping and running and planning on, we can talk about um, re, uh, redoing some of the, the plantings that have been in the, there in the past, but it is a visual place. That people are walking instead of driving. Yeah. Now, what, what's missing on the... Uh, of course, I mean, yes. What's missing on the, the ordinance is the dollar amount in Section 1. And that we have to, we have um, eighty thousand allocated as a budget figure, right, Ralph? There is a there is a budgeted uh, capital, capital. for eighty thousand dollars currently. There is uh, around two hundred and twenty thousand dollars that is currently unallocated for the capital improvements. Uh, and then there is a hundred and twenty thousand dollars unencumbered in the space fund. No, we have to plug in a number here. That would be a reasonable number now if we decide to move forward with the resolution. I thought we had numbers. Do we have numbers for this? Well, we were saying it's been around 125, 130. 130 the entire so project. 80 plus 50. Well, and I, right. I, think, I think in terms of um, appropriating funds, you should go north of that. If you don't use it, that's fine, but mm -hmm. you don't want to have to come back with, uh, with a new ordinance. So, you know, let's, if, if ever, everything, John, is we're, we're, we're playing with 125. I mean, if we look at 150, it gives you some 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 room to negotiate in case they find something because we haven't gone out to bid on this yet. We don't know where the numbers are going to come in at. And then we can always return the monies to the open space fund, Ralph. If we don't, if you can't any ordinance like that. Okay. Would be canceled and goes right back. Good. To its origin. So if it's uh, appropriated and there's some left over, that, that would automatically go back or can't go back. Our resolution would need to be put before you, and you cancel it. You can cancel it back. So I I suggest that we put seventy thousand in the line on section one. That more than should sufficiently cover the cost of the project. How much? Seventy. We've already approved. Seventy and eighty would give us one fifty to work on a project, and if it's not spent, it will go back into this, or could it go back into this fund? Uh, this thing has gone from eighty thousand to one hundred and thirty thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand. Well, we're not saying we're going to like spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We're saying we're going to appropriate the money, like Billy said. If just we, in if case. If we put in less and it comes in slightly over, do you still have the opportunity to uh, provide that fund to flow the contract? Yeah, we have to amend the ordinance. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So yeah. The yeah. contract is yeah. after the end of the 10 to 60 day contract, which we have to award the contract so I can certify the fund for the day. Ralph, is there a dollar, is there a number? I put 70 on the table. Is there a number that you would suggest that's different or? No, I, mean, I, I gave the total amount that is unencumbered in, in the open space uh, development, not the development portion, the maintenance portion. So 70000 from 220 I mean, if you're comfortable with that balance left after that. You know, well, I, I didn't know what the, what the governing body was comfortable with as a balance remaining in the open space. Well, that's, again, the more capital stuff. What do you suggest? Give me a number. <laughs> well, it, it seems to me that we're sort of putting the cart a little bit before the horse here. We ought to really know the scope of the project. Well, we discussed numbers last meeting. We were at 125, 130, right, John? Are you comfortable with 125, 130? Well, at, at Public Works, we discussed, again, having a little bit of a cushion, because the other thing we identified as we got up there, the rails are um, non-compliant with ADA. You know, we have to put new rails down the steps. The rail up along 
Somerset. Um, so that's a turn, that's where there's another item. There, 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 there's more steel work, there's specialty structure work that has to be done that I don't think was ever contemplated. Right. And, you know, the, the disagreement, I think, to spend current tax funds on the project is, I think, offset a little bit by the fact that we're, 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 if we can use the open space funds, um, we can then use the other dollars if we don't spend them on other projects. You know, you talk about the roads or the signs or something else. Well, we can't spend open space money on roads. No, exactly, but you, you can spend it on the stairs. Fund. So I would, I would argue that you should... Uh, I'm in favor of doing open space just to fix use as a patch <clears throat> for the budget shortfall, yes. That makes sense. It's a partial open space, partial, you know, our regular budget. But I don't think, you know, that... No, I, you know, we've got I, fields we have to do. We've got irrigation. We've sure. got basketball courts. We've got swimming pool that needs help. But, you know, you know, a lot of other stuff. So, John, what do you think the rails will cost? Is there additional work? And Janet, so you, we talk about costs. I mean, we've we've already spent ten, twelve thousand dollars of engineering. Yeah. We can continue to spend money, and we haven't done anything yet. Right. So no, let's no. let's come up with the dollar amount, and you know, it, it's going to be sufficient. I would like to hope to cover the cost of the project. And, sixty. Yeah, we go with a minimum of fifty, a maximum of seventy. <laughs> Peter suggested sixty, so there you go. I'll go to sixty-three. <laughs> Let's keep round numbers. Here. All right, P Peter's comfortable with sixty. Comfortable with sixty. Sure. Anyone else? Any other offers? Oh, wait. I, the I'm are not. Good. Jan is okay. okay. I mean, I you know, if we're thinking it's one hundred and thirty, thirty thousand additional cushion is a lot of money. I think it's not a thirty thousand no, no, additional we had cushion. Eighty already appropriated. I understand we had 80, so 80 and then we went to 140, 140, and then we talked about a $20,000 cushion. Now all of a sudden you're talking about a $30,000 no, cushion. No, 10. No, 10. 10,000 because of the railings and other things have been discovered. Right, but we were at 130, and we, you did a $20,000 cushion. Now you just upped it to 30,000. No, yeah. no, he reduced it by 10. He reduced it by 10. He reduced it from 20 to 10. Let's vote on the 60. 70 was a was a was a twenty thousand dollar question. A sixty thousand would be ten thousand dollars. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm talking thinking one sixty. And 60. to be honest with you, you have to have a contingency in there because when you pull that apart, you don't know what you're going to find. It's complicated for sure. You might find someone buried under it, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> Missing stone mason from a hundred years ago. Yeah, the guy that didn't do the job right the first time. <laughs> Hi, Jack, is this introduced tonight or removed? Yes, right. right. I want to entertain a motion to um, move ordinance 16120, I think. That's 1721. Um, 17, uh, 1721. Yes, yeah, this is an order. Okay, yes. Um, appropriating $60,000 from the Borough Open Space Trust Fund development to be used to be part of Claremont Steps. And when's the public hearing, I think? Uh, June 27th. And that a public hearing will be heard on June 27th at 7 p.m. Ten motion. Move by Mr. Deportier. Second. Second by Mr. Youngblood. All in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Abstain. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one of the year. I was waiting. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not here on the 27th, so it there doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, um, gap legislation support. Jack? Yes, the, the gap well, I've got there, from 1999 through 2015, when Carl was essentially out of business, and the municipal expert, e position is that there is no gap obligation because any obligation during that period should have been included in the present obligation, present need for affordable housing. Uh, the Fair Share Housing Center and Kinsey, their expert, uh, has taken the position that there was a legal obligation, there was a legal obligation for municipalities to provide affordable housing during that period. Uh, so far, three judges have agreed with uh, the Fair Share Housing Center, um, and it's resulted in, I think, 79 more units on our number. Uh, some towns have resulted in hundreds of additional units. Uh, but in any event, the Municipal Consortium has appealed that to the appellate division, which is to hear the case. And also, uh, there's been a bipartisan bill 
introducing the legislature to say that there is no obligation during that gap period. The only court that has an obligation under that model is the prior, prior need, the present need, and the prospective need for the next 10 years. So this bill is, is, is the bill to do that. Uh, and the consortium has asked that all the municipalities uh, support that legislation, and I think it's a good idea. I know that there's been going back and forth between GAP and all that kind of stuff, but this affordable housing concept is partly based on population, right? It's based on a lot of you know, lots of populations. 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 The population has really gone up, it's gone down, I think. Flat. So I'm not correct, but it's, uh, to read those reports makes your hair hurt. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I suggest that we pass. Right. It's discriminatory. And Jack, there's no, uh, th this won't be viewed uh, adversely by our adoption of this? By we're already an adversary in litigation, so. Yeah, we're already involved, so. With 400 and something of it? Yes. Yes. All right, everybody comfortable? All right. This is going to be 16, 120, I think. I don't entertain a motion to move um, resolution 16-120 in support of adoption of S-2254 um, slash A-3821 to clarify municipal affordable housing obligations. I'll move. Moved by Mr. Youngblood. I'll second. Second by Councilman Waite. Roll call, please. Mr. Verma? Yes. Mr. Deeports here? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Waite? Yes. Mr. Youngblood? Yes. All right, we have a um, a rough draft of a resolution um, with Bedwell um, sidewalk agreement, um, the Borough Bernard's bill. Anybody have any comments or concerns that or questions? John, anything from Public Works? Um, I talked to Jack and I, and I was hard to say back and forth. Jack did a, a really good uh, initial draft to address our concerns uh, concerning the uh, Installation of the sidewalk on borough property primarily to assist students at uh, Bedwell and Middle School reaching uh, around the uh, swim and drive. We just wanted to make sure the borough was adequately you mean buses? from a uh, have it construction, uh, but primarily maintenance after the fact, the snow, ice, uh, structural damage to the sidewalks. And the disagreement really did a good job of addressing my concerns. Um, and the no. um, parking you know, areas that you talked about um, previously that were deteriorating that were um, loaned at some point, is that, where does that come in? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand. Well, is, I think, a question. Have you heard anything back from Nancy Hunter on the no, letter you sent to her? No, since I, I just got an email 10 days ago, maybe from her saying she apologized for the delay in responding. Uh, and that was on the overall issue of uh, memorializing the relationship between the borough. Uh, so, and this is just a piece of that that Mayor Tom wants to move ahead on. So I just got this, this one short email saying sorry she had not responded to the, uh, the parking area that um, had been used only um, the pool parking area. The pool parking area. Yeah, yeah completely separate. I, I just just go around just it. separate. Okay. Right. The question separate. is should we bundle um, them? Should we, should we, bundle should we yeah. Wait on this agreement until we have some progress on that shared services <clears throat> proposal with the school board. In, in the interest of helping them construct a sidewalk, I suggest that you maybe keep the two separate. Uh, they were anxious; they actually wanted to begin two weeks ago, and we informed them that was impossible with the uh, drop-off of students. Uh, there's no How way. How do they do it? Makes no sense. We encourage them to come up there during, uh, you know, about a We year waited to the pave the place till they were finished, remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and we, we told them in no uncertain terms, you're waiting until after school's out to right. get this yeah, project like, done. Uh, five or six days between 4th of July and, uh, and the school will close, right? Cheryl, is this going to interfere with people getting in and out of the pool? Okay. But it's on. You know, I'm, I'm sure they'll probably make sure we can get in and out. 
we sidewalks on the other side of the street, yeah, sure. right? It, it is on the other yeah. side of the street. There's going to be a short period of time when there's a direct conflict. We can do what we did when we paved the swim pool driveway and, and reroute it the other way. I honestly think we should bundle this. You know, we should meet sooner rather than later just to have some kind of an understanding, I think, I think some kind of, you know, quick outline, to be item, quite honest with you. The other item was a, was a, a separate item that brought up a bigger thing. I think Jack's letter was really about in general. So I think this is okay to do this at this point because either way. We'll lose leverage. I disagree. Yeah. Well, you did lose your leverage, but. If, if, if they have to get this project finished. It's not, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's not real. I don't think of it as leverage. I just want to get it done quickly. You know, get it off the table quickly. It's, it's in the, both of our interests to do it as fast as possible. Get it in, get it out, get it done. And you know what? We'll be focused. They'll be focused because they have a time frame also. Jack, they want to get this in. Jack, in terms of uh, correspondence with their attorney, how long do you think it's going to take to uh, wrap up an agreement? A general agreement? I wouldn't think it would take very long. You know, with the couple issue. days? A couple days? Yeah, agreed. So uh, I'll follow up with Nancy Hunter. They're already dragging their feet, though. Right. John, are we losing any deadlines here? I mean, it's their project. It's, it's, it's theirs. Deadline. It's their project. Yeah. It's theirs. I mean, you know, I'd like to put it off. You know what? They can call you right away. You can put something together real quick. Yeah. And off, we can get it all done. Put it off How for me. How long would it take to do that sidewalk? It's not this nah. long. A week. Yeah. That long. I mean, because yeah. you're also <clears throat> looking at like fall break, you know, the teachers' convention. So I mean, there are other times where the driveway mm -hmm. is. That's a few of you. Okay. Part of an overall package. We're not going to do yeah. anything in, you know, in isolation. Okay. Well, that gets things done right. quickly. If it, yeah. I do ask that if, if it does delay for, for whatever reason, that we, we should at least, and if you like to, I'll reach out to Nancy. They may not even know that we're looking at this kind of an agreement as a condition of them doing the sidewalk. So at the very least, if you I think want Jack to, I'll reach out to them, or Jack, reach yeah. out to them and say, you know, yeah. there, there's stipulations you, you on for everything. Yeah, look at yeah. the best thing is just okay. for Jack. That's fine. We'll follow up in my to hear for you. <laughs> Absolutely. You're, Right. That's it. Any other council members have anything before we go on the session? Mike, did you say yeah? No, I'm good. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. I thought I'm good. Sorry. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, oh. All right. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn into executive session where we'll discuss Board of Health, um, attorney client privilege, redevelopment plan, plan contract negotiation, public works contract, um, potential litigation on post Cunard drainage improvements, and library HVAC. Um, Come on. Did we do the rocket launch? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we approve. We already it. said, go ahead. We breeze the lesson. There's one other thing before we go is um, we have the grant last year that we got for 22000 and change to uh, do a trail from the Polo Grounds School connecting into the Audubon property um, and to uh, Patriots Path. We have to uh, cross water, and I just want to make sure that it's clear that we're going to need a um, apply the DDP for water crossing permit, um, and that, that is something that we're all aware of and okay to, to do. Okay. You're, you're simply applying for a permit? Yes. Right. Okay. Crossing cool. a little stream? Yeah. Put your sunshine, I guess. Oh, yeah, no problem. All right, a motion to adjourn. I'm going to move to adjourn. Oh. We will be coming out and taking action, sir. And we will yes. be coming out taking action. I'll move. All right, moved by um, Councilman Schmidt, seconded by Councilman Youngblood. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain, the ayes have it.